yeah. All right, so for whoever's listening in, we're going to do uh, some scenarios today about how to understand appraisal gaps. I feel like it's very, very common that people today are trying to do whatever they can to get an offer accepted. Oftentimes, that's offering the this cap. So what I did was just put together this quick PowerPoint um, where we're going to kind of go through the different scenarios, different offers that your clients may or may not have. One thing we're going to keep consistent throughout all these scenarios is that we're going to assume the borrower has a 780 credit score. You don't need a 780 credit score to do this, but correct. This is a 780 credit score. We're working with $10,000 of property taxes, and then the rest will kind of go through as we progress. So the first scenario we're going to look at is somebody who is submitting an offer with 20% down. And the guys come to us and say, hey, we want to submit this offer with an appraisal gap. With 20% down, we can absolutely do that. So we're going to look at somebody who's buying a $500,000 home. They're putting $100,000 down, so they have a 20% down payment. You guys want to waive the appraisal decisions. This home can under appraise and this borrower can still be okay with everything that they have, so long as they're okay with a couple of things. So again, here's the initial offer, here's their monthly payment. We offer, we waive the appraisal payments. Appraisal comes in $25,000 below. We are now at a 475 appraised value. So what does this mean for the borrower? First and foremost, if that borrower is putting 100 grand down, they're borrowing $400,000. So we're all understanding that, right? The appraised value comes in low, the loan amount doesn't change. So now the only thing that changes here is you can see on the first one, 20% down, borrower has 20% equity in the home. Because the value under appraised, they now only have 16% equity in the home. That's the first thing that your client's going to want to understand that they're going to have to be okay with. Hey, you are purchasing this home for $500,000 when an appraiser says it's only worth four seventy five. dollars So you have less equity than your original offer. Next. Because they go below 20% equity, when you put less than 20% down, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with mortgage insurance, correct? So when you submit an offer with 5% down, 10% down, 15% down, that client has mortgage insurance in their monthly payment. So the only thing that's going to change in terms of monthly payment is that they are going to incur monthly mortgage insurance. Here's the second thing that you'd be okay with now. Here's their original payment. House under appraises, nothing else changes. They incur $33 of monthly mortgage insurance. So you can submit an offer 20% down, waiving your appraisal contingency. The home can under appraise by $25 plus thousand dollars. So long as the borrower is okay with purchasing the home for $500 and someone says it's $475. And so long as they're okay with now their monthly mortgage payment going to $30 higher, then everything's okay small increase in a monthly payment to submit an offer waiving the appraisal contingency could go a long way. Now, prior to doing this, you're going to talk to us and we're going to understand that they still qualify with this monthly mortgage insurance. So that is something that we all are aware of when we submit that initial offer. Now, the most common question is like, okay, well, the house under appraises, do I have to come out of pocket for the extra 25 grand that it under appraised for? Scenario one, coming out of pocket, 20% down. That's 100 grand. Say your closing costs are $10,000. All in to buy that home, that borrower is going to come out of pocket for $110,000. Now the homeowner appraises. Well, what happens to their out of pocket cost? Nothing. They're still borrowing the same $400,000. We'll wait for the points. So they're still borrowing the same $400,000. The client's already prepared to come out of pocket for 110. That's their max. They don't, they don't want to spend more than 110 to buy the home. Well, if the homeowner appraises, do I have to now come out of pocket for 125 grand plus my closing costs? So long as they're okay with $33 a month in their mortgage payment, they can still come to the table with the same $100,000 plus closing costs. Any questions on that 20% down? You said this is scenarios based on the 780 credit score. Yeah. If they had a lower credit score, does that mortgage insurance go up? But if they have a lower, Joe, Joe, good question. If they have a, a lower credit score than 780, 
less than permanent. So let's say it's 720. This mortgage payment is going to be a little bit higher because their interest rates going to be slightly higher. Mm -hmm. But again, that's discussed prior to. Their monthly mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is based on a combination of your down payment and uh, your credit score. So with this, technically, how a mortgage insurance company is going to be looking at it is this person is putting 16% down on 475. So their mortgage insurance is going to be based off of a 16% down payment. If you have a lower credit score, this might go up to fifty dollars a month. But again, that's something that when you guys are discussing with your client, hey, we need to submit this offer of waiving the appraisal contingency in order to have a chance at getting the home. Talk to Mark and Nico about what that means should the value come in lower. We're going to let that client know, hey, if the property appraises for this, this is which one. This is how much your payment is going to go up by. So it's going to be known to that client, hey, your payment's going to go up by $50 a month. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, waive the appraisal tickets. They qualify, yes, waive the appraisal tickets. Lower credit score, slightly higher mortgage insurance. That's basically the answer to that question. How long is the mortgage insurance for? Great question. So, <laughs> mortgage insurance by law stays on uh, a mortgage until the client has reached 22% equity in their home. It comes off of automatically. When they reach 20% equity, they can pick up the phone, call the mortgage company, and ask for it to be removed. And that equity increases when the principal is paid down. Correct. Every month you're building equity in your home. When you have 16, when you have between 15 and 19% equity, you're typically looking at anywhere between three and six, three and seven years for that to come off. Question, is this for conventional and FHA? Is it the same? This is, this is for conventional, the thought, the, the ideology about it. If you have an FHA borrower putting 20% down, you can still waive your appraisal contingency. The monthly mortgage insurance, it's not, it's not gonna change because FHA's mortgage insurance is a fixed number. When you go three and a half percent down, it's fixed at 0.55. That's you guys need to know these numbers. Five percent down is 0.5, and it stays that way. So hypothetically, an FHA borrower's payment might not change for mortgage insurance. The only thing that you might see is a slight increase in their interest rate, which is another thing that you would communicate to the client. We would communicate to the client would be, hey, you're 20 percent down FHA, house comes in under your rate is going to go up an eighth. Here's what that means in terms of monthly mortgage payment. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Now you can wait to take this again. So that's 20% down scenario. And then again, the, the big thing for this is that everybody's always asking, well, do I have to come out of pocket extra? Technically, you are coming out of pocket for that extra 25 grand, right? Because now if, if this is a value, and this is the loan amount, you're down payment 75 grand. But in the beginning, you were coming out of pocket with 100 grand already. So nothing is changing in terms of how much money you were prepared to spend from the beginning. 100 grand down plus closing costs, 100 grand plus closing costs. Everything's the same. Just yeah, yeah. One, one last question with the mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. um, when it reaches 20% equity? Yeah. Does it automatically come off or do you have to call? You have to call. So that, that's when you start the loan and you put 20% down, there's no mortgage insurance. Right. When you start the loan with less than 20% equity in the home, it's on there by law until you have 22% equity. When you have 20%, you can pick up the phone and ask them to remove it. Now, when you reach 22%, does it automatically come off? Correct. Automatically, you don't have to do anything. As soon as you hit that 22% equity, it's gone. Okay. While we're on the topic of mortgage insurance, what are some other ways that you can remove that mortgage insurance? Let's say this person purchases this home. They have 20% down, so chances are this person is financially well off with their savings. Let's say they renovate a bathroom, a kitchen over the course of two years. They might not reach that 22% equity yet based on their payments, but the value of their home might have gone up. An option that they can have is they get their home appraised, Call an appraiser five, six hundred bucks to get an appraisal. 
take that appraisal report done. So now let's say the price of the home goes up to 550. Now they have 21% equity in the home. They can take that appraisal, send it to their mortgage servicer, and the servicer can remove the mortgage. And it doesn't have to be refinanced. Correct. You can just take the appraisal, send it into the mortgage company. And so long as the value's there that you have the equity, that's what they'll, they'll they take. They just away. have to pay for the appraisal. They just have to pay for the appraisal. And have a conventional loan, right? FHA is for the life. FHA mortgage insurance stays on for the life of the loan. Correct. Correct. If you put more, if you put more than 10% there on FHA, it's on there no matter what for 11 years. Anything less than 10, it's on there for the life of the loan. So that's scenario one. Now, scenario two, which is perfect timing because Mark absolutely loves this product, and I would be amiss if I didn't bring it up. So now you have that same 20% down borrower, and you call Mark and I and you say, hey, can we do the value assurance program with this property? Let's say the answer is yes. Now you have value assurance. Same scenario, home under appraises by 25 grand. But because you have that value assurance, you are not incurring the monthly mortgage insurance. We are taking on out of pocket. We're taking that risk and taking care of the monthly mortgage insurance for the client. So their monthly payment is not going to change whatsoever. So that waiving your appraisal with the value assurance same deal, they're still coming out of pocket for the same 100 grand, still playing the same closing costs. Using that value assurance is a home run for the 20% down below. What's value assurance? Value yeah. assurance. Is everybody familiar with value assurance? We talk about it so much, I assume. So our value assurance program, when you have a client with 20% down payment, you can reach out to us and say, hey, we're going to submit an offer on 123 Main Street in Wayne. And we get a value assurance. We take that property, we put it into our system. If our system, say you're offering 500000 If our system comes back and says, hey, this home, you know, based off of the data that we have, we're going to accept the $500,000 value. What we will do is we will give you a certificate that says NJ Lenders is certifying the value at five hundred thousand dollars, but it has to be twenty percent down. Has to be twenty percent down. If it's fifteen percent down, strong client, great credit. Go to Mark. If he can do something great, shoot for twenty percent down clients. Yeah. So, so our product is it's something we came up with over summer. Bottom line is, it doesn't work for everybody. So I want to preface that when I say it. So what happens is. You're going to come to us and my client bank and offer on XYZ Home, Main Street, Wayne, New Jersey. They're offering five hundred thousand dollars. Can you see if we have a possibility to waive the appraisal? Because the client doesn't really want to waive the appraisal, we're nervous in doing it, but we want to try to make our offer as strong as possible. We run the the address through what's called an ABM, uh, a desktop appraisal. Basically, we're running it through kind of like Zillow. If you guys are familiar with Zillow, they give you a Z estimate. Well, we're doing something very similar to that. We're going to come back to you and say, you know, we can offer value assurance or we cannot. Now, we don't want to alarm our clients. So what if, what if we couldn't offer you value assurance? You tell the client, oh, they can't give you value assurance. Oh, it's not worth 500000 We don't want to go down that road, right? That's trying to explain something that would be negative with it. So we just tell them there's not enough data. But it's an online service. It's not enough, not enough data online to be able to provide you a value assurance. We don't tell them it may not come in because I've had properties where I got, where I ran it through the desktop appraisal. And there was a hundred thousand dollar difference between the value the, the ABN and the actual appraisal that was done on the property. So I couldn't get value assurance, but the house appraised. So it can it's not perfect when you're doing it through a computer system. But okay. So you see a lot of houses that are coming in under appraising or not? The different areas in general. Uh today it's more common than it was earlier in the year. You're not seeing it on everything. I would say I'm seeing it on about five percent of the transactions. You know that that value is not coming in. Um, just it's it's a bit of a tough market, right? With with values going up and maybe not as many sales happening right now, and so it's the, the market's not catching up to it at the moment. Something I just read yesterday or earlier this week, they're projecting values to go up on average two to four percent over the next five years. So as an example, if you bought a house in two thousand twenty three for four hundred thousand in five years, they're projecting that value to be about four seventy. You know, and and getting back to the normal appreciation rates of two, three, four percent. But going back to the value of insurance product, any any of you, if you have a buyer twenty percent down, we pre-approve them. 
They have a credit score above 720, ideally, but again, we'll look at it. We can offer your client this value assurance that Nico's talking about where we may be able to waive the appraisal. I can tell you it works because you're going to present an offer that you're able to waive the appraisal and it makes you offer stronger and you're getting offers accepted as a result of it. And I'm, I'm telling you it works because I've seen it. You know, if you're, if your offer is competitive, not you're at 500, somebody came in at 550, I would, I would explore the 550 as well. So it's worst case scenario. I get 500 to under appraised if I was a seller. Um, but uh, if you're close, you may win the bid as a result of it. So it works. That That's separate from if a house, if we're talking about appraisal gaps, this is a way to waive your appraisal and not have it cost your client anything. And we want to be right because if we're wrong, we have to place PMI on the file and that costs us thousands of dollars. You know, it costs us anywhere from 1500 to say $6,000. We don't want to lose. We don't want to be wrong. You know, so we when we give it, we're pretty confident that value is coming in. You know, so when you present when we submit our offer, you would there would be like a you said certificate that yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. With our pre approval letter, it says energy letters give value short. We thought to appraise the home, we're not yeah. waiving the right to an appraisal, yeah, yeah. We still have to do the appraisal, we just take it on the chin if it doesn't come in. You know, we, we take the hit, and then the listing agent gives you a call and says, What's this? Uh, yeah, yeah, we explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly, that is exactly. You know, that's exactly. That's exactly. It's not your presentation, right? So when you present the offer, you're probably going to give some some letter with the offer, right? To talk about, hey, the strength of your buyer and why they're why you think there's a right fit, and hey, they have value assurance. Can we set up a call with my lender to discuss this further? I mean, that's what I would suggest you to do, so I can explain it for you. Yeah, or Nico can explain it. One of us can explain it for you. You know, and help you sell the buyer. The credentials of the buyer, the fact that it doesn't matter what the appraisers were, they're paying five hundred thousand. Now our client has to understand that even if the house appraised for four seventy five, they're still paying five hundred. You know, and that's you guys talking to them. You know, and helping them understand that. You know, when they're doing that, and the value the value to the listing agent is like let's go back to this scenario, right? Let's say you have the twenty percent down buyer, but they're working at their max approval numbers. Homes under a phrase, everybody starts to panic. Okay, is the deal going to fall apart? When you offer the, when you submit your offer with the value assurance, you're eliminating any type of scenario where that monthly mortgage payment goes up. So the value add to the listing agent is yes, we still have to get an appraisal done, but if it under appraises, the deal's not going to fall apart because the borrower qualifies. Their monthly payment's not going to change and go above their limit to what they can qualify. So it, it eliminates a lot of the risk associated with the problems that come with an underappraised property. What questions do you guys have on it? Because I know realtors that have been doing this for 20 years struggle with this. Do you guys have any questions? I, I, don't want my okay. I missed the first couple of minutes. So do you, you don't actually cover the difference or you do cover We don't come out of pocket with it. The difference in price. So, in other words, if, if they if the contract reads five hundred thousand, the price is four seventy five. We're not giving them twenty five thousand dollars more for their down payment. We're just agreeing to, to put P, to pay for the PMI behind the scenes so that the client doesn't have to pay private mortgage insurance. So, going a little deeper because their loan will be their loan technically now is an eighty five percent loan to value, not an eighty percent loan to value. All right. So, so maybe I'll start with that. So, if a client's putting down twenty percent. And the house under appraises, what happens? That they still get their loan, but now they have to pay mortgage insurance. Because with 20% down or more, with a conventional loan, your client doesn't pay private mortgage insurance. So if the house under appraises and say it comes in at 475, the loan to value to the lender is 85%. Because in the lending world, it's the appraised value or the sales price, whichever is less. That's how we calculate the loan to value. So in, in the contract, it says they're putting down 20% because they're paying 500,000 for the house and they want to borrow 400,000. So what we're offering to your buyer is that they're still going to borrow $400,000. Even if the house appraised for 475, they still put down 100,000. They're still putting down $100,000. They're still giving the seller $500,000 for the home. So we're sending 400,000 to the closing and they're giving 100,000 to equal 500. Your client just doesn't have to pay private mortgage insurance. Your client doesn't get stuck with paying monthly mortgage insurance. 
we're eating that cost. So your client doesn't lose in a monthly payment. They're just agreeing to pay more for the house than what it appraised for, which in this market is kind of common. Let's say you're buying a house, you're buying a house for uh, five hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. You are prepared when you talk to us. Hey, we're submitting an offer, twenty percent down. You talk to Mark and I. We say, okay, be prepared for a hundred thousand dollars plus your closing costs. Call it one hundred and ten grand. Now the property under appraises. You are still coming out of pocket for the same hundred and ten thousand dollars. Your down payment plus your closing costs. It's just that the value is at four seventy five versus five hundred. So in terms of out of pocket costs, which I think was your question, you're not you're not going hundred thousand and then giving another twenty five thousand. Everything is still the same because you are still borrowing four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So we'll go here now. I'll show you. Yeah. I'll write that. So now you have somebody who's not putting twenty percent down. Now you have a fifteen percent down borrower. Can we still waive our appraisal continues? The answer is still yes, so long as right they speak to the lender, understand what will change should the property under appraise. So in this scenario, we have the same $500,000 home. You have a borrower putting 15% down. This is what they're prepared for. This is their total monthly payment. Incorporated in that payment is $35 of mortgage insurance. Home comes in at $475. They're still borrowing the same $425. Their monthly mortgage insurance goes up $28. When they speak to us, it's the same scenario. Hey, what does waiving your contingency mean for you? If the home under appraises, if you're okay with your monthly payment going up $28 a month, we confirm that they still qualify. They can still purchase the home with the same $75,000 that they were putting down, plus their closing costs. None of their out-of-pocket costs changed. The only thing that changed is their monthly payment ticked up because of the mortgage insurance that they incurred. So in that scenario, they can have a $25,000 appraisal gap. So you presented your offer and said, we're giving you a $25,000 appraisal gap. So they're accepting the price from 475 to 500,000. And the only thing that changes for them is their monthly payment goes up by $28 a month. The difference between the month, the mortgage insurance here to the mortgage insurance here. That's the only thing that changes. And a lot of clients don't understand that. They get intimidated by the fact, well, the appraisal is 25 grand less. I have to put down $25,000 more? The answer is no. Your payment just changes by $28 a month, and they pay PMI for maybe three or four years longer than they would have if, it, if the house appraised for what they were paying for. So how would you write that on the offer? You're going to do an appraisal waiver, appraisal gap of 25 grand, and I would give you an, a pre-approval pre letter for both 500000 and if the house appraised for 475 with the same loan amount. So they know the client's approved for the loan, whether it appraises for 475 or 500,000, they can still get a mortgage. And they're waiving, they're giving a gap of $25,000 so that they can still qualify the home. You could do this all the way down to the scenario. Nico gave you guys one example. If somebody's putting down 15% on a $500,000 sales price, well, if that person qualifies for a loan with 5% down, right? And their payment may go up a little bit more than what this says here. Now you could do a $50,000 appraisal gap. Or ten percent, right, of the number, because if the house appraised for four fifty and they're borrowing four twenty five, let's just assume that was ninety five four twenty five ninety five percent of four fifty, which I know that's not exact. Um, they can still buy the house and have a fifty thousand dollar appraisal gap. So it's a fifteen percent down buyer that if they qualify for the same loan with five percent down, the difference in their payment may be sixty dollars more a month, as opposed to twenty eight dollars more a month. It's not significant. But it's understanding how financing works so that we can help a buyer do a gap to be competitive when they're presenting an offer. Because every real, I know every offer I give, there's something that comes up with the appraisal. They want a gap or they waive the appraisal. What are they willing to do? And if we have an idea what the number is, maybe you can tell your client, waive the appraisal altogether. It's going to appraise for at least this. I'm confident in that. We run the numbers and say, if it comes in at this number, this is what your payment will be compared to what it would be if it comes in at purchase price. So sometimes they just ask, they say, well, who's paying that, that gap? How do you explain that? How so do you, how do you respond they that? still are. They still are. So 
this is where so you st you're, you're still paying and you're just paying insurance on their mortgage insurance yes they would pay what's called private mortgage insurance so right. so in other words they're still putting down the same money mm -hmm. they're just so i would the, the analogy i give to a client when i talk to them is are you okay with still giving the seller five hundred thousand dollars even if the house is raised four seventy five if their answer is yes, mm -hmm. then they understand they're still borrowing for twenty five. Mm -hmm. They're still putting down seventy five thousand dollars. The only mm -hmm. thing that's changing is their mortgage payment, because the mortgage mm -hmm. insurance is going to go up a little bit. Correct, correct. Now, if we were doing the the value insurance that we talked about before, same thing. Your your client's paying five hundred and borrowing four hundred. They're still putting down a hundred thousand. If the house under appraised and we gave value assurance that we're we're guaranteeing the value, now we pay the PMI cost. Their payment stays exactly the same. Nothing changes with the payment. Is that something that just you guys? Do? Yes, okay. it is something we do. Just a, honestly speaking, mm -hmm. it is, it's sure. a product we created to help realtors in this environment. You know, it the value assurance works about seventy percent of the time. That we get, we're able to provide value insurance. You know, yeah. I've had people, and I'll use an example where I have found when we put it out there that is a good strategy. If you have buyers that are working with the online companies like the Rockets and the Quickens and those those types of companies, that your offers aren't getting accepted. One of the reasons is because you're dealing with those companies. A lot of realtors don't want to work with those companies because if something goes astray, you're not getting anywhere with that. But if you can say, hey, I have a lender that may be able to help you waive the appraisal. Why don't you get pre-approved by them? It may help you. They're local. A lot of people know who they are. And they may be able to help you waive the appraisal. But they have to put 20% down. Ideally. It has to be a conventional transaction. It can't be a big Um, Yeah. You know, we can always talk with somebody less. You know, you have a three and a half percent down buyer, there's no wiggle room. But if you have 15% down, there's a little wiggle room. We can figure that out if they're strong. If it's possible, you know, if our desktop appraisal helps us feel comfortable about the value. Because I've had some where I've spoken to the buyer to presenting an offer, and I'm like, they're offering 450, and I'm like, I can give you value assurance of 490 if you want to increase your offer. You know, and I talked to them about that as well. But that happens sometimes. They're they're offering below the max number I can go to to help them waive the appraisal. So I help them do that. Yeah. You know, what kind of questions, guys? Because I see a lot of I'll say blank blank stands. <laughs> this is financing, but this is trying to help you when it when it when a when a, when you're in a when you're in a uh, situation where you're presenting an offer. How do you make that offer as strong as possible for your buyer? And I'm going to pat myself on the back and say, you have to have the right lender. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say that. And you have to have a lender that's willing to speak to the listing agent and help them understand how strong your buyer is. And you have to have a lender that can help your client understand the difference in the payment if they're concerned about if the house is going to appraise or not. Because you may not discuss it when you present the offer, and then you get a phone call from the listing agent, hey, is your client willing to waive the appraisal? And you didn't discuss it with them yet. But now you have to discuss it with them. Right? How many times does that happen? Happens a lot. I just lost one for that because we didn't. They didn't want to put it on there, but they also didn't talk to you guys. They had somebody else, uh, another lender in Pennsylvania, that didn't offer this program. Mm -hmm. So I, had I known about it, it probably couldn't have taken it. Might have been able to help. Or you have some people that I'm not paying anything more than what the house appraises for. Remember, there's still people that have that mindset, right? They still have that mindset. They don't want to pay more than what it appraises for. And then there's the other half of the people that are like, I understand the market and I may have to pay more than what it appraises for, but that's what I want. You know, I want that house. I want to be in that neighborhood. I may have to pay a premium. And that's, you know, you'll feel that out when you're talking to the people. You know, you'll you'll know what their where their head is at, right? What they're thinking. So um, Mark, on the on the flip side from a selling perspective, you were able to help me out earlier this year because. I'm looking at multiple offers and I'm like, okay, I got a cash offer for this, but I have a conventional loan offer mm -hmm. for this. And if the mortgage one did a, an appraisal waiver, that would have um, 
in most instances, been stronger than the cash offer that I had because they were offering more money. Correct. So this is also very helpful when you're selling to look at cash offers versus conventional mortgage mm -hmm. offers. Yeah. And even with that, when, when you're a listing agent, if you have a cash offer, we don't worry about somebody getting denied for a mortgage, right? It doesn't, that's one less thing to worry about. Yeah. Um, you may you may have though a person with a mortgage offering twenty, thirty thousand dollars more. What's the worst case scenario? You take a higher offer. Even though you're competing against cash, just say, hey, look, I want to put a floor on it at 500 grand. Let's say that it was a 530 offer to a 500000 dollars offer. And that 500000 dollars offer was cash. Convince the listing agent. Listen, you have a cash offer for 500. I'm at 530. What's the worst? What, what's the worst that you lose? You're giving your client an opportunity to get thirty thousand dollars more for their home. If the house appraises, right, and and that could be your rebuttal if you're on the buyer side to the listing agent. What do you have to lose? All right, so you have a cash offer. What's your cash offer? We'll make that our floor. But you're willing. You're you have an opportunity to get five more money. Why would you not pass on that? You know, it's how you present things, right? You can't hurt to present that to somebody. Is the cash offer more than our offer? No. What do you have to lose? The only thing you have, all, only thing you're giving your clients is opportunity to gain more money. That's it, right? If you think about it when you present the offer, I mean, I've had that conversations as well with listing agents. Because they'll tell me, I have a cash offer, it's less, but it's cash, and your buyer's getting a mortgage. So what do you have to lose? They're going to get a mortgage. I'm not worried about that. But what if the house price for more? Your client gets twenty grand more, whatever the dollar amount is. Throw that back at the listing agent, right? Pick their brain. They tell me, I know the numbers half the time. You know, tell me the number. You know, I always ask if I say that to the other person. I prefer you not to, you know, so I don't, because I know it's confident. You guys have a, you can't share the numbers, right? But I can, you know what I mean? I can share the number. I don't have a, uh, the same, what, what's, Obligation. Obligation that you would look at banking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but my point is, even when your client's getting a mortgage, ask, well, what's the cash offer? Am I higher than the cash offer? How much higher? You know, they may not give you the number, but their words may direct you. And then you take it to the, you know, people, you know, many realtors give away the answer without saying it because of the words they use. Mm -hmm. But if they have a higher a higher cash offer, well, there's, really, there's really nothing you can say. Nothing right? you can, that that's the flip side. Yeah. yeah. Then they're they have a strong offer, a higher cash offer, and you know, that's different. But if it's the reverse, push. Yeah. Push. Ask questions. I've been doing this 30 years, guys. I I've heard and seen, I feel like everything. And when you're presenting an offer and you're up against cash, ask, am I higher or left lower? And then sell it from them. You know, especially if you have a strong buyer, fifty percent down buyer. You know, to I see that a lot. The well, they're still getting a mortgage. Okay, they get a mortgage. They'll waive the mortgage contingency. Would that help? Then ask them if they're willing to waive the mortgage contingency. Doesn't mean they're gonna. You say, what if they do? And you come, I'll come back to you. I'll make a phone call. You know, understanding this and having your client speak with us to understand this. So let's take that scenario where Mark said it's fifteen percent down buyer. And the home appraises for 440 or whatever 90 or whatever 5% equity in the home is. If the buyer loves the home and will pay five hundred thousand dollars when an appraiser says it's 450, if the client's okay with saying, Hey, Mark and Nico, if the home comes in at 450, what happens to my payment? Payment goes up by $110. If they still qualify and they're still comfortable, you can offer. You could submit that offer that may be stronger than everybody else's with a $50,000 gap. That to a listing agent, I would imagine, relieves a lot of stress where it's, hey, we're all on the same page understanding the market that the worst that this home comes in at is 480. And even if we're wrong and it comes in at 470, we're still okay. And, and I want to add to that too. I will tell you that I hear many, many times when the listing agent calls me to to vet the pre-approval, they know the house values in the sheet. They admit it to me. They don't say it to you, but they admit it to me. They're concerned. Well, it may not appraise. What do you think? Uh, my response is simple. It's, I don't know. I've never been to the house. Tell me about it. What do you think? 
well, they have comps here, 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 here. So, well, should be good. My bridge are local to the area, and you know, we'll do, you know, we'll, we'll work our hardest to get it. If you have some comps that you think can help support the value, you provide us with the comps or give it to the appraiser, and we work it from there. But even two, in these scenarios, we can we can close the gap on the appraisal as well by and I don't want to confuse you guys now, but offering something that's called borrower finance PMI, where the payment may only go up by twenty five dollars a month in that gap with, with 20% down and down some of the appraise. So if you have that situation, what I'm suggesting is you want to get us some box that will help your client understand what the payment's going to be before they go in. So when they present the offer, they know what the worst case scenario is. And they can make the strongest offer possible. Exactly. You know, and they're okay with the change in payment. So if the home under appraises, we're not scrambling to explain anything. It's Hey, home under appraises, we're prepared already. Buyer's like, all right, my payment goes up a hundred bucks. I'm still coming out of pocket for the same dollars that I was originally. I want the home. We can just keep rolling business as usual. So nothing changes. You, know, you don't have to do any sort of, we can of course do an appeal process, but everybody's on the same page that home under appraises, we're good. And we will appeal. Yeah. How quickly can you come up with like this? scenario for the client like what if they're like over the phone they don't want to talk to you guys until we find the house so we find the house they want to put an offer in i say this is something that i've learned um can you talk to them and then i find out that we have to have you know oh best and final in a day um so could we do it pretty quickly yeah we okay. could it could be done within 30 minutes but the challenge is we're having a phone conversation with them it's a general conversation because we don't know anything about them. So we can't be accurate in what the numbers are because we don't know what their credit score is. And PMI is all based on the credit score. And if we're doing value insurance, it's the same thing. If we put down enough money, we have to have them in the system to be able to generate the letter and the value insurance letter. So we'd have to know more about them. So we'd have to have documents to be confident because remember, when we present the offer and we put our name on it, you want us to talk to the listing agent and sell to that listing agent how strong that buyer is. So the more paperwork we have up front, we be we could be as we can talk from a strength. So we can always help your client in that situation just to pick to, to answer general questions. But I would my first response to you would be is you have to help them understand the importance of having the right lender. Mm -hmm. And and maybe it's in their best interest to get a second opinion and then see how the conversation goes from there. And let us know, though, too. Hey, they're calling for a second opinion, so don't push them to do the online application and don't push them to run their credit because I don't know if they're going to go in that direction, but maybe we can win them over in that phone call. And the next day they're calling up and say, hey, what do we need to do? You know, type of thing. Again, it's how all of you present to your buyers. Everything's about presentation. Everything's about the words you use. You know, it's, it's how you present it to someone. If you use the word problem, they think it's a problem. Right, but if you talk about they may have solutions for you, or they may have advice for you, or guidance, or or ideas that may help you get from point A to point B in this competitive market, you know, where house not appraising is not a problem; it's a hurdle, right? And a hurdle to be overcome. And again, it's an obstacle, right? I didn't know about this literally two weeks ago. <laughs> now you know. So now you have. The last scenario put together here is okay. Well, Nico, Mark, we have someone who's not putting twenty percent down, and I'm putting fifteen percent down. They have forty grand. That that's the number that they want to use, not percentage. Hey, I have forty grand to put down. Buying a five hundred thousand dollar home, forty thousand dollars down is eight percent. Minimum down payment for minimum equity that you can have when you're purchasing a, a primary residence, single family, is five percent. This person's deal comes technically built in with a $15,000 appraisal gap. Their payment from here to here does not change. Mortgage insurance, as we I mentioned in the beginning, right? It's credit score, down payment, mostly, right? It's risk-based on that. Mortgage insurance looks at a 5% down payment up to a 9.99% down payment as the same risk. So if they go 8% down, their mortgage insurance is 90, I'll call it 100 bucks. 
if the value comes in at 485, they now just have 5% equity in the home. Mortgage insurance doesn't move. Their deal stays the same. So when you have someone in this type of scenario, you can submit so long as the client's okay in understanding that I'm purchasing this home for 500,000 when it's actually worth 485. They're okay with that going into the offer. Their monthly payment doesn't change a bit. Their out-of-pocket costs don't change a bit. They're still coming prepared from the get, $40,000. Home under appraises, you're still coming with the same $40,000. You're not coming out of pocket for that extra 15. Monthly mortgage insurance does not change. Does everybody understand that? You got it? You need like a book on everything. Every scenario, you need well, a book on No, but do you understand where we're going with that? So if your client is willing to pay $500,000 for the home, so as long as it appraises for 485 or more, their payment stays exactly the same, and you can offer a $15,000 appraisal gap if your client is okay with paying $500,000 even if the house appraises for 485. Okay. And nothing changes. Nothing changes in their monthly payment. Okay, nothing changes with the money that they believe when they signed that contract that they were going to bring to closing. Nothing changes. They're just agreeing to pay more for the house than what it appraised for. And where's the value for you guys in this? It's if you're a listing agent and you're looking at two $500,000 offers, both of them have $40,000 down. One of them is coming in with a $15,000 gap and the other is not. As a listing agent, they're both pre-approved, they're both qualified, but someone's giving you a $15,000 cushion, your offer might get taken over that guy's. It might even get taken over somebody that's 20% down. And think about this, because I want to go a little deeper without me, but what Nico said 100% right. But now think about somebody with 20% down. The house under appraises. They have to pay PMI now. With 20% down, you don't have to pay PMI, right? But the house is under appraised. So the lender, as I mentioned earlier, it's the appraised value or the sales price, whichever is less, is how we calculate the the value. But the house appraised for $485, that client's got to pay maybe $30, $40, $50 a month in PMI. Now, if I have that buyer with 20% down, I'm going to sell them on the fact that it's costing you $30 more a month, $360 a year. For five years, it's costing you $1,800 more over five years. What's the big deal? You've been out there looking at home, which made multiple offers. They haven't been accepted. It's costing you $1,800 over five years. If it didn't come in, why wouldn't you give an appraisal gap? On the flip side, though, how I sell against it will be the guy with 20% down. All of a sudden, he, got, he gets shocked that he has to pay PMI now. The guy with 8% down already knows he's paying PMI. The guy with 15% down already knows he's paying PMI. So if he gives a gap, all it changes is the amount of the monthly PMI. So my same conversation, if an under appraised and you had to pay PMI to push you $50 more a month, it's $600 a year for maybe an extra three years, what did it cost you? $1,800 over three years. You spend more money on that in lunch a week that you waste. That you throw away, that you didn't eat. And if you present things, it helps you. You know, these are conversations I have with people every day. You know, I talk to a lot of people. I've closed a lot of loans in my career. I see and hear everything. You know, once we get them approved, I know we had a client, Maria, right? We went back and forth to pay for it with getting it right, but now they're pre approved. They were tougher pre approval, right? Different moving parts and everything else. And I think they're still trying to figure out what to do, right? Exactly. You know, <laughs> but, but my point is we're thorough up front. So when we get to these situations, we can we can talk from a strength to help your buyers. Mm -hmm. You know. So it, what if the house appraises for five hundred thousand? So nothing the, changes. Oh, nothing okay. changes. But your offer got accepted but because you offered the gap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's where again, you might go in, this is where the conversation is all had prior to submitting the offer. Because two weeks into the process when the appraisal comes in lower, we're not telling them this for the first time. They are they understand already that they're still purchasing it for 500 and that their monthly payment could go up by this much. That's the worst case scenario. You might tell them, hey, let's offer that $25,000 gap. I know this comp, this comp, and this comp, I have no worries about the house appraisal. But we get to submit the offer with a gap. 
That's why my question was, how many offers really come, how many appraisals really come in under? It's not a lot. Because the chances of it appraising are pretty high. They're pretty high. And yeah. like the town of Wayne, as an example, the town of Wayne has a lot to draw from. It really, really does. So I'm using Wayne as an example right now. There's, what, there's 50,000 people in Wayne. There's a lot of homes. You get some of the smaller towns. You may have a bit of a challenge with the house appraising because maybe you bought the highest sale in the town, the new, the new high in the town. Well, now that could present an issue. But that's your job to know that, right? To say, hey, are we, okay, so let me talk to Mark and we find out, hey, what do you think? This is what I have with this client. Before we call them, I talk to you, find out what our options are. And then we do a conference call with the client and we walk them through everything, right? Because you know you're going in and you're testing new waters. Same thing in a condo complex. You know, you know the highest sale in the complex, you're going in higher than that. You're testing new waters in that complex. So you want to have all your ducks in a row when you present it to your client as to what their options are, you know? Yeah. And then beyond that, say, you know, okay, well, what scenario? Because again, yes, most appraisals are coming in at value and better. But what about in the scenario where I just had someone from your office submit an offer $96,000 over ask and didn't win the deal? When you start to go that high over ask, that's when you start flirting with, all right, maybe this isn't going to come in at value. But if the person is in love with the home, being able to submit an offer with this might alleviate that. The listing agent might look at this and be like, that's the one. They have an appraisal gap. You guys are going to get the most money possible for this offer. And they're offering a $50,000 gap. We're, it's a done deal. We're good. And your client knows that, hey, I know I'm submitting an offer 100K over ask. I know that the property might come in lower. But they spoke with us prior to doing that. And they understand my monthly payment could go up by $50, $60 a month. I'm okay with that. They qualify for that. And I'm okay with buying the house for 600 when someone says it's worth 550. Everybody's on the same page there. Home under appraises, there is no panic. It's just we take the appraisal in stride. And like Mark said, we'll always, we'll always appeal the appraisal to try to get more value there. Um, but in general, it's just appraisals in. Hey, it came in under. Mark and Nico already knew that. Nothing changes with the finance. It's not like we're going to deny the loan or have to restructure things. And now your client is dealing with a thousand dollar higher monthly payment or anything like that. It's not when you, when everybody's understanding of this prior to submitting an offer, it makes such a big deal seem like not a big deal at all. And we give you a pre approval letter for both numbers mm -hmm. so that the realtor knows, hey, the pre approved that comes in over. And we can give them both. I would. I would give it a gap to approve for this, not to approve for that. Now, the, the, I will say the better realtors out there will ask for both. Well, how do I know they still qualify if it comes in less? You can't just put it on it. You know, they the, see it. But the smarter realtors that have been doing it for a long time, um, they know, well, wait a minute, the loan value change, so they still qualify. So, yep. So, as a listing agent, I should ask. If they do a gap, yeah. Are they coming to the top? Are they coming to closing with more money? Or are they keeping their loan not the same and just, you know, either borrowing the same amount of money? Sure. Yeah, so either sort of the funds or proof that they qualify for mortgage in the summer. I mean, that would be a question I would ask. If it's not one or the other, now you have a problem. You're back to the table renegotiating or that buyer is no longer buying that. You had a question? No. <laughs> no, like you have well, you know, actually, I did. So, um, <laughs> one, you guys do the value assurance and you get that certificate. Is there any cost for that if they don't use it? No, it just is. So, uh, it's, 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 it's specific to that property. Okay. It's specific yeah. to that offer that one. Okay. And that, no that isn't inserting a $25,000 gap. With that, it's right. waiving the contingency entirely. Okay. So it's all about the, just not being privy to this information along with submitting something like a value assurance certificate. It, the sole purpose is to make your client's offer as strong as possible. Do whatever we can to get it accepted. And everybody's, the purpose of us doing this is so that you guys have a general idea. Like your general understanding and takeaway from this is that, hey, so long as somebody qualifies, well, 
Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, what happens if the home under appraises? Generally speaking, if you're okay with purchasing the home for the same amount, even though it comes in lower, your monthly payment might be a little bit higher. Give Mark and Nico a call. They'll run over the specifics with you. Make sure that the numbers work. Because again, we might run into a scenario where this 15% down borrower, this might be their max. And as soon as that extra $30 comes in, now they don't qualify. Now the new conversation is, hey, if you're okay with that. Maybe we haven't paid off the credit card and we can still do it. But that, we always have to have the conversation first to make sure they can incur that monthly payment and still qualify. Because like we were saying, you know, the deal could blow up if they don't qualify or have the extra money to put down. And what we would encourage if we have to have that conversation is your partner. Yeah. We, we do a, a conference call and you're part of the call. Even if you don't, you never just fly on the wall, just listen to what's going on. Number one, it'll make your client feel comfortable because you're there. It eliminates confusion later because you were part of the conversation and it, it makes you smarter. You know, I, I, you know, one of my teams I work with, a um, very successful team, they, um, their, their leader talks about staying in your lane as a realtor, right? You're not a financial person, but it doesn't mean you can know a lot about finance to know when a red flag may go up and pick up the phone and call the lender. Say, hey, the client was saying this, we still okay. You know, because you, you heard a red flag or a potential red flag. And with this stuff too, the other purpose of like presentation is this type of stuff serves as a reason for you guys to reach out. You have someone that's been looking and maybe you haven't heard from them in 30 days. They're a 10% down buyer, 15% down buyer, submitted multiple offers and are losing out. It's a reason to reach out and revisit. Hey, just sat in on this meeting to where we have something that can help you with a stronger offer. What is it? Let's get on the phone with Mark and Nico. They'll help you guys talk about appraisal gaps, inserting an appraisal gap into your offer so that next time they submit an offer, obviously it's not a guaranteed acceptance, but it's a little bit better than the next guy's one. You know, you know, and where Nico's going with that is, is you have a client you're working with, maybe they, they got cold feet. I want to put it on hold right now, right? I want to wait. You don't want to just text them and say, hey, just checking in. Are you ready to look at that homes yet? You want to you want to reach out to them with a value proposition. You know, what are you bringing to the table today to help them get back on the house search? And this is a way to potentially get buyers that were teetering on the fence back into looking at homes again. You know, especially now that more houses on the market now, too. Right? I mean, I think the trend right now is. Or homes are coming on the market, so okay. yeah. <laughs> no, there are, but 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 again, and, uh, and, um, we're, we're in this room now, so we're kind of like role playing. But now, when you pull your client up, more homes are coming on the market, it could be one more home, it's more, right? <laughs> so, it's another way to get them out there and get your face in front of them. So, the motivator, yep. yep. I have two questions. This whole thing is only if they don't want to pay for it out of pocket if they don't have it then then that's when we offer this these programs well the value assurance can help them that it, that they don't have to come out of pocket with more money but it also sometimes helps them feel comfortable to just can wait the appraisal and not worry about coming out of pocket with more okay money. but if they but just saying like they have a million dollars like it's they can just do that they're, they're, they're willing to come out of pocket with but money. if they don't have the extra money to come out then, then these are the alternatives to that yeah. That scenario would be somebody who's like, I don't want to pay an extra $63 a month. I want to have 20% equity in my home. Home under appraises, great, no problem. Come to the table with whatever 20% of the appraised value is. And now nothing changes. Most, I feel like most clients are doing, hey, I have 20% down because I want to have 10 grand left in the bank. Right. And they don't want to touch that. Okay, well, let's submit an offer with the gap. And you still can have that 10 grand in the bank, right. even if the home comes in under. It's just you're okay with an extra 30, 60, 100 dollars a month in the mortgage. Room. So that's appraisal gaps, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. If he is just if people have money to work with, there might be a way to help them, even if it's a small gap, even if it's a five thousand dollar gap. Right. You know, and they, again, this is money with you guys. Yeah, value assurance is with us. The, 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 everything we just explained to you, honestly, and besides the value assurance program, 
every lender should be able to offer to your fund. If it does all your loans. That's <laughs> like, well, honestly, and that's where if you have a client who's even if they are 20% down, 20%, 15, 10% down, and you're actively working, you might be going to see a house this weekend with somebody who's 10% down. And every offer that you've submitted up until this point has just been, hey, free approval, 10% down. And that might be all you have because you can't make it any stronger. How do you make it stronger? Hey, let's call Mark and Nico. We can submit an offer on this home. Maybe there's a way. You know? That's enough. What if you put on there on the offer, uh, offer appraisal gap up to 25,000, but you needed more? Like, the, the gap is 30. So the gap, if it goes if it goes beyond the gap, yeah. you're back to the table. No, 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 no. Close close. Okay. Close. So if you're doing an appraisal gap, mm -hmm. you're saying a $25,000 appraisal gap. So they're saying they're going to pay $25,000 more than what the house appraises for. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of an appraisal gap. Right. So if it appraises for 470, add 25 to it, you're paying 495. If you're over 500 and have a $25,000 appraisal gap, your client's willing to pay $25,000 more than the appraisal. Right. So it appraises, so right now it appraises for 500,000, nothing changes. If it appraises for 490, nothing changes, you're still paying 500. If it appraises for 475, nothing changes, you're still paying 500. If it appraises for 450, you're paying 475. because You're adding $25,000 to the appraisal. That's my understanding of an appraisal gap when you present the offer. They're willing to they're willing to pay five thousand dollars more than twenty five thousand dollars more than what it appraised. But that small little gap in between, what if they don't have the money for the next? Is what I'm, is what I'm the, so between four seventy five and five hundred. Yeah. That's what we go over the, the numbers with them and make sure they understand how that affects their payment, and they're good. So we're going to do a twenty five thousand dollar appraisal gap. We're making sure they qualify for the loan, even if they're appraised four seventy five. So if what if it appraises for 470 is my question 470 mm -hmm. they're going to still they're going to pay 495 so we have to base all our loan to value figures off of 470 in my eyes mm -hmm. to make sure they have, they have their 95 percent minimum of 470 so they the offer was 500 so who covers that five five thousand dollar difference the, 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 the purchase price is technically renegotiated down to 495. Well, that's what it means so the listing agent would have to to eat the five, you know what I mean? The they, when you there, when you offer that gap, it's it on it's understood. They're taking okay. the risk. Yeah. They're taking the risk on saying, "Hey, I think this house is going to appraise for at least four seventy five. If it comes in under, they they're agreeing with that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Light bulb. Yep. There you go. Yeah. But you guys, if you guys want to talk one on one about this after the fact, too, we're here for a little bit, mm -hmm. and you can always call us. You know, yeah, go over because we'll explain it to your client. Do you have anything that I can hand to them or email the customer? You can show them the value assurance. I could send I could send you a uh, value assurance. Okay. Uh, like fly or PDF. That would be you great. Can, you can that email it, screenshot helpful. it, and text it. Yeah. Um, and the and the, the what you're gonna get says twenty percent down more. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't like mean we may not want we can come up with alternatives of less than twenty percent down. Mm -hmm. But if they have five percent down or three percent down, we can't do it. It's just it, they're just it's just more talking about how um the payment changes, not that we can give them any assurances on the value. You know, I mean, we can value which one we can guarantee value. Yeah, that's yeah. well. So if you guys need to yeah. spread okay. it, yeah, okay. Can I just, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and 